Okay, testing, testing, microphone, can you hear me? <laughs> Anyone, can you hear me? It says I'm connected. My microphone seems now to be live. So you obviously all saw me with my mouse moving and nothing else happening. You know there's always a gremlin, there's always a technical gremlin. Um, say my mic's working. So hopefully... In a few seconds, when the lag catches up, you'll be able to hear me. And you'll all be able to start saying hello in the chat and tell me where you're tuning in from. I think it's like I say, the power dip must have knocked out my um, mic, so I have to sort of restart all my programs again. So hopefully you can hear me. Um, so hi, Colin, if you're there. I'm not sure Alan's been in. He always threatens to come in and to... Um, hassle me but he hasn't to date um but yeah he might be he might be lurking um hi joanne hi avril and barry um hopefully the chat's working i've got it open on my phone as well but if some of you can please start in the chat at least then i can see um if it's working i'm just going to open up the chat on my computer on my phone as well until someone chats actually in chat. Anyone? No, I've got no chat. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so YouTube's not working for me now as well, so I've got the chat up on my phone, so I have to hope the phone, I need the volume on. So right, Rob's gonna pass me his, um, rhubarb, rhubarb, rhubarb. <laughs> Rob's gonna pass me his, iPad and I'm going to have to try and do it from there. Let me just see if I can kickstart it working here. We will get going. I don't think my chat's, my chat's going to come up at all. It was working earlier. Um, no idea. Okay, anyway, hello everybody. So I can see here now who's actually in tonight. I'm actually going to go to tonight because I don't have it. So we've got Kim and Avril and Susan and Joanne, Philip, Linda, Barry, Anita, uh, Kim. It's a good job you were chatting amongst yourself here. Um, quite low sound. I think I was actually silent. <laughs> um, a little bit quiet. Had to refresh, but fine now. Had the volume turned down. That didn't help. That's fine, then, Kate, as long as it was your end and not my end. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to be looking down a lot because I've had to grab Rob's iPad um, because the chat is not working on my YouTube um, setup. Oh, it just likes to wind me up. It doesn't matter how much I... I had this all set up from six o'clock, did a couple of test runs. Everything was fine, but no, no, no. It just likes to come and get me. So we're going to look at a couple of things tonight. I've got a couple of things to say to you as well. Um, I've had to rest up for a couple of days to be able to do this tonight. Um, some of you will know that I've had some problems with my voice, um, my breathing, lots of things like that over the last couple of months. Um, gone back to still very low sound and your vol volume is up full. That's from Linda. Is anybody else's volume a problem? I can turn mine up a little bit more. Right, I've turned mine right up now, and I'm right in up against the mic as well, so it should be okay. But just let me know. Okay, so, yeah, I had a few problems with my voice. I've been... I got ill in December. I know this is going to go on for months. Ill in December, I got a virus. Um, ended up with pneumonia at the start of the year. Every now and again, I'd think I was like well again, and then I'd have another dip. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, I got knocked right back. And I think, to be honest, it was a problem after using solvent. I'm doing the um, B pictures, um, the background pictures, and I was doing colour pencil background on one, and I got the solvent out. And that night, I just did not stop coughing, couldn't talk, and I was like it for almost a week. I was really, really bad. So obviously, something's not right. I know something's not right. Volume fine. You can hear me fine here. Fine. Okay, good. I'll go with that anyway, but I'll just try and keep my voice up. So anyway, the culmination was lots and lots of tests. Lungs are fine. Chest is fine. The wheezing, the gasping, the, um, yeah, the rough voice, losing my voice and everything. 
they didn't know what it was. And then a couple of weeks ago, um, they basically said, urgent call, we're going to bring you into hospital for some tests. So <laughs> I've been freaking out for a couple of weeks. Um, so I haven't been around much online. So I just wanted to say sorry, first of all, for not being around as much as I would like and possibly you would like me to be online. But last week I just was kind of in meltdown mode. I couldn't focus on really anything and I was just trying to avoid everything. So I was spending time with the dogs in the garden, enjoying a little bit of sunshine. Um, because with everything that's going on in the world at the moment, um, and the fact that here in the UK we're supposed to be reaching our peak with this whole situation, hospital was kind of the last place that you'd want to be. Um, have people said it's alright? Okay, Rob's just said that the volume is low now, but, um, a couple of you have said it's fine, so... I can go in and just try and change the settings again. Bear with me a second. Okay, so I've just been in and changed the settings again, so hopefully that's even louder now. <coughs> so anyway, yeah, so I got called in. I had to go into hospital last Friday. Um, got there, was waiting an hour, and then they decided that they'd sent me to the wrong hospital, which wasn't great. So a few tears and they managed to get someone to see me and the big good news is that it's not the dreaded C word as in not coronavirus but the other C word that we usually hate to hear so that's why I was freaking out because I knew that's what they were looking for um, which kind of meant I don't know what to be honest kind of the end of pretty much everything for me was um, my this at the moment. I'm frustrated enough as it is that I can't get on here more to talk to you, do more live streams, do the virtual workshops, everything that I had planned. I just can't do it. Um, and it's so frustrating. So I just wanted to say sorry, really. But there's nothing I can do. Um, can you hear me better now? Good. Volume louder. Good. Yeah, I think it knocked part of my mic off as well. So I've had to go in and restart everything. Hopefully everything's OK now. Um... So yeah, that's me health-wise. Um, they've come away saying it's something called vocal cord dysfunction and something else. There could be nodules in my throat, and, but until I go back again now and they stick a camera down my throat to have a look properly, then they can apparently send me for speech therapy, um, possible operation, we shall see. So at the moment I just have to carry on resting, I've got a humidifier that um, I've got in my bedroom and I'll have it in the studio when I'm working as well, lots of um, damp air. So nothing dry, I'm not allowed to be in dry dusty situations, but Pampastol does not affect me, so that's a really good sign. Um, however, solvent obviously does and I am not going near it. Um, so I'm having to change tack on one of the B pictures because I was going to be doing pit pens with solvent. Um, I can't. So at the moment I'm probably going to switch that out to either watercolour pencils for the flower or even watercolour pens. So it still goes down like the pit pens and I blend it out with water rather than using solvent. But I'll explain all that anyway. So that's me kind of up to date um, health wise. So I've been, it's given me lots of time for rethinking things as well. So me and Rob are kind of revamping because we haven't been able to get my teaching channel on my website and everything running up, up and running yet um, because it needs a lot of input from, put from me recording new videos and intro videos and my voice just can't do it. So we've just revamped Patreon a little bit over the last couple of days. So um, if you do log in, you'll probably see a couple of the tiers of the lower tiers have now gone. Um, you just can't see them. It means that people can't join in at those lower tiers anymore now. Because I was just finding it a bit of a struggle, a bit of worrying that, and just providing the content at the five, um, like the five dollar rate. Um, but that content will still be going out um, because there's people in that tier. It just I didn't want that tier to carry on building up anymore. And it was to be honest, a lot of people it's all stepped up to either the nine or the twelve or the fifteen. The other thing as well is, as so many of you have jumped into the $15 tier, which, again, amazing, so a huge big thank you, and that's the $15 tier is obviously where we do the live draw-along sessions every month. Um, because I want to be able to answer all of your questions and respond to you all du during the draw-along, I've now put a cap 
on the amount of people that can join there. So I think there's this afternoon, there's, I think there's 12 spaces left in that $15 tier at the moment. We'll, we'll review it again in a couple of months, see how it goes, because there's people joining from different areas of the world. So some can tune in live, some can't. Obviously, if I do the draw along on a different time or day, others can join in that normally can't. So it should balance out. But at the moment, I, I just put a cap on it because everyone's been stepping up quite a lot lately. Um, and I want to make sure that I don't have too many people um, logging in, asking questions and me not being able to respond because I don't think that's fair um, because you are paying me after all for the for the patron um, tiers and the rewards and I want to be able to give. I don't want to feel like I'm falling short with you and um, shortchanging anyone and I love the draw along sessions and it is nice to be able to interact with everybody that joins in even if you just sit along and watch at home and I know some of you just sort of like watch and that's safe for you to do that's fine but the ones that actually draw in and are asking questions I want to be able to make sure I can still respond to you um so those are the changes just just in case you log into patreon and it looks a little bit different that's all we've done um so are there any questions in the chat tonight I know we've been asked a couple of questions I did see I don't know if Harry's with us tonight Harry's usually with us he did pop a question on my patreon earlier about ink tents um, so if you've got any questions, let me know. Okay, I'm looking forward to the draw along as well. Oh, shall we? Whilst we're talking about the draw along, then I'm gonna I'm gonna mention the draw along. I was gonna do it at the end, but I shall do it now. So each month, obviously, we we do a draw along. It's a two hour live stream draw along, and then I I put out sort of reference photos and talk about what we're gonna teach and I'm gonna teach and. You guys hopefully are going to learn. So the last couple of months we've been doing tonal values. Um, we're building up um, understanding tone in di lots of different ways. We did white on white last time. Well, this time we're going to do black on black. And it's my favourite. If, if I had to choose one method, um, it's black on black. One, it's quite quick to do. Two, it's really dramatic and really effective. Um, and three, it it kind of cleanses uh, your mind because you strip away all the colour. You almost strip away a lot of the detail as well because it's all about the negative space. Um, so let me just show you, for example, let me just bring up a couple of pictures, hopefully. So this is, let me get in. Okay, so this is like, these are old commissions that I've done. Ah, oh, hi, Harry, you are there. I'm going to get onto the ink tents in a minute, Harry. Um, so yeah, th these are a couple of old commissions that I've done. So from colour photos, and it's just using a white pencil. We use a little bit of colour in the eye there. Um, let me just show you a couple more. Now this one's a great one as well because you can't see the eye under the hat. There's a few different textures there, but this is all about the negative space. It's about embracing what you cannot see. And a lot of you, especially doing commission work, um, and especially doing um, working from awful photos, which of course you all none of you do that, do you? <coughs> no, I, I was guilty of it over the years as well. So I know you come up against really tough photos um, to try and create um, detail from. Now, what, what I want to show this week is embracing that negative space. It stops you worrying about it, and because we've stripped the colour out, and we're just using we'll use a white pencil and a black pencil. Um, and because we've stripped all the colour away, we're not worrying about colour. All we're worrying about is the highlights and the tone. And what we can't see, we're not going to worry about because our minds are wonderful things and they can fill in all the details and they can put in or imagine what isn't there for the eye to see. Um, so let me just show you. This is the image we're using this weekend. It's an image of one of my dogs that passed away a couple of years ago, Bo. Um, this was just taken on a phone one morning in bed. I took a few photos, but this one is perfect because if I fiddled with this photo, I could probably inject more light, probably almost get to see that eye on the side of the face that's in darkness, probably lift out the ear. So if I wanted to, I could edit it um, and probably pull out some colour if I left it in colour as well. But by leaving it as it is, just enhancing the highlights dropping that darkness down, the, you know, the con up, up in the contrast and up in the shadows a little bit more as well. It creates pure drama. It creates, I don't know, to me, it just creates something really special. Especially because I know, you know, I know the dog. Um, I know his look. 
he can say just as much in that one eye as if both eyes were you know, staring at me. So we're going to be focusing this weekend on what's not there as well as what is there. So if you want to join us, we're Sunday, two o'clock, we'll, we'll be doing that one. So I've done that, all kind of sequence, but at least I've done it now. <clears throat> okay, so I've <clears throat> got some questions. Yes, Robin, we talked about the difference between Caran d'Ache Pablos and Luminance. You have a credit card that's dying to buy some Caran d'Ache pencils. Okay, well, first of all, with the pencils, if you can hang on, I can put pop some links up into... It'll probably be tomorrow morning, if that's okay. I might not get it done tonight. I'll pop some links up into the comments with some affiliate links. So even if you just click through on the link, you don't have to buy what's on that link, but I'll link through to some pencils. This is if you're going to buy on Amazon. Um, anybody, if you want to buy on Amazon, if I put up a couple of affiliate links, if you click through, you don't have to buy what's on the end of the link. As long as you put something in your basket and purchase it within 24 hours, I get a teeny bit of commission and it all adds up. <laughs> um, so yeah, Robin, we're going to talk about the differences between the Caran d'Ache Luminance and the Pablos, and I'm also going to be showing a demo. We're going to be comparing seven, I think I've typed, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. we've got eight types of pencil here because Harry asked about an hour ago about ink tents, so I've popped ink tents in there as well. We're going to do a little comparison. I'm going to explain the difference between them, and I'm going to sort of try and eliminate some of the myths about wax and oil, um, but I've got a feeling it's, a, it's one of those things... What's a wax pencil? What's an oil pencil? It's going to go on forever because the manufacturers, the chemists, are not they're not going to reveal every, everything to us. They've got their secrets. They've got their formulas. That's the whole point. They're, they're not going to give away, you know, the, the exact recipe for each of their pencils. But we have got some information that the chemists have sent out, which, you know, we can only go by. And then obviously people's experiences, and I'm going to do a little demo as well, just to show my experience. I just need to get a quick <coughs> drink. Bear with me a second, or my voice won't last. Okay, a couple of other questions first of all, because I'm going to cover that, Robin, when we do the demo. Is there a YouTube video for the photo adjustment for the black on black? No, Josephine, I can put one together. Sorry, Joanne, I can put one together tomorrow for you, um, if that's okay. Because I think I did mention it, um, and that's where you, if you're going to use your own photo, I can show you just how to do that. I mean, it's in Be Funky. I've got the ones on there showing how to edit your photos. I think it's got three cows in a row. Um, so it's a case of we're putting it into black and white. We're going to up the highlights, up the contrast and drop the shadow but depending on what your photo looks like is how much you adjust it by so maybe I can do that demo tomorrow and pop that video up in the next couple of days if that's going to help you okay Avril went berserk and bought a suede matte board a few weeks ago any tips or will that be touched on in the black on black bit no because we're not working on the suede matte um, again I can talk about it when we do the um, comparison I'll mention it now I was going to put a piece of suede mat here to work on tonight actually like a piece of black um, to explain why I prefer certain types of pencils for certain types of paper so for working on suede mat I prefer a waxier pencil some people I've seen using polychromos it, this depends as well on how warm your room is what time of the year it is. So at the moment, my, my studio is pretty sort of normal temperature. Apart from in the winter, I can get it really cold in here, but then I've got my heater on, so it kind of warms up my workspace, and underneath, you know, my pencils are quite kind of always at the same temperature. Um, sorry, let me just pop this iPad down again. So... For, I find with the suede mat, you want a slightly softer pencil. You don't want anything... I wouldn't use something like Lightfast on there, um, but to be honest, I'd need to experiment more with those. So I tend to put down my base layers with either my Pablos or Prismacolors work well as well. Prismacolors are a little bit softer, and I call them claggy or cloggy. They, they kind of clog up a little bit too quickly for me. So I tend to prefer, out of my waxiest pencils, um, I tend to prefer my um, Pablos for my base layers. And then I'll pull in my polychromos if I want any super sharp details. Um, but the, the key thing with working on suede matte board is 
it's very frustrating. Um, be prepared that all of the layers that you put down on the first day, you'll get it, you'll be working it, you know, sort of colour block as normal. So use the side of your pencil, colour block to get lots of pigment down. Really, really work on your colour blocking because overnight, all of that oil or wax, or wax basically the pigment is going to soak down into the suede mat. If you think it's suede fabric, it's porous, it's going to soak up like a sponge. So don't cry the next day, because I've been close to it many a times, especially when I've done white on black suede. When I've, I've done some you know, black suede matte drawings with just white, I've done a couple of wolves, um, what else have I done? Possibly a snow leopard. And anyway, you put it all down, it looks fantastic, you go to bed, you get up the next morning, and it's like the eraser fairies have been in and stolen all the pigment overnight, and you're like, oh my god. So you just got to start again. But each time you do it, it soaks in slightly less because you're just kind of filling the um, the nap. You're filling that suede up. It, it, once it's soaked up as much as it can soak, then your pigment starts to sit on the top. But the first strokes that go down, just especially for fur work, it looks beautiful. But then you've got people like um, Gemma Guiling. She does. She's done an amazing um, elephant. Uh, I think it won a CPSA award as well, a big award. So she's done that kind of texture on there as well, that's that rough skin texture. But it works amazing for fur work. So yeah, use a soft pencil, a waxy pencil, and also um, be prepared for the pigment to disappear. Um, my computer, is that the power tip again? No, I'm back. Okay, that's fine. I thought I'd lost you all then. So... Black suede map board, that should be up. Thank you in advance. I think I'm making sure that knows which ones would work best with... Hand pastels. Okay, that's to go back to the luminance and the pablos. I'm just reading the questions out here. Barry's asked, you've got black UART. Is that okay for polish? Yeah, UART's fine with any pencils. Um, again, with with the proper sanded papers like UART is and Lux Archival, proper sanded papers, they prefer the supposed more oil pencils. They would prefer polychromos. If you look at Aliona's um, products, uh, that she's created especially for her sanded paper, Lux Archival. Um, she always recommends the oil pencils, so in other words, she recommends mainly the polychromos. Um, you can use other pencils, but again, something like the Prismas can clog, and I see people getting frustrated working even on pastel mat because it almost clogs and fills the tooth too quickly, um, almost like kind of sticky almost, so you can't really get your detail. Um, but it depends on how light your pressure are, how many layers you get down, lots of different things. Just going back to the suede mat board, you can use solvent. This is flicking in and out again. Okay, I'm back. I think it's these power dip things that we had, so hopefully it's only making a small difference on your end. I'm watching it on screen as you're seeing me as well. I can see I'm back again. It's the gremlins. So we haven't got eraser gremlins tonight, we've got the power gremlins. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, with a sway mat board, you can use solvent. You can use watercolour pencils on there as well. So you can use something like the Albrook Dura to put down your base layers, because again, they're quite softish. And then you can add water. Um, but again, you can use solvent, and that'll sink that pigment down into the, the nap much quicker. Um, again, I'm avoiding solvent, but you can use solvent on there, and it gives a lovely painterly feel, and it almost fills that nap quite early on. Same as solvent does on anything really, it just sinks it down a lot quicker. Best thing to do though is just have a little test piece, even if you just work, if you're working on a piece, and I know it's expensive, that little outside edge, so that inch around the outside that you, you know, your, your, your board or your mat or your frame is going to cover, use that for a little bit of testing. I often do, I just like scribble a few colours, you know, just lay a couple down on the side. I'm always using that little extra strip of paper around the edge because I know that a mount or a mat board is going to go over the top and it's going to be hidden as anyway or I'll chop it off um, seems fine from this end okay I can make it's flicking in and out here so I'm just a bit worried that I'm gonna it's gonna all gonna shut down I'm gonna lose everything but if I do hang in there 20 seconds or so I should be up and running again <coughs> okay another quick drink my voice is dropping already I know I talk a lot during these sessions.
so any more questions please pop them in what I'm going to do before in case I lose you is I'm going to flick over now to do this little demo that I was t telling you about so let me just switch my cameras okay so I'm going to switch over here to get some extra light in here there we go some extra light so I'll talk as well a second down in the bottom corner here okay so there is a huge huge myth um so there's been so much misinformation that's gone out on um, social media and the groups over the years um, about which pencils are which we've had we've actually had conflicting um, information as well come out from nowhere to put this iPad. We've had conflict and information as well come out from some of the companies. I know someone who's been in touch with Karen Dash and been told that the Luminous pencils are their wax-based pencils and the Pablos are oil. And I've had someone else being told that the Luminous are the oil-based pencils and the Pablos are the wax. So basically, if you want to get to the um, truth of that, all pencils could be referred to as wax-based. Pretty much all pencils, all colour pencil cores, all have um, a mix of oil and wax in them. It's all about the proportions. And this is the bit that, you know, the chemists in each company obviously isn't going to reveal their recipe. So I've just jotted this down earlier. Um, so with the cores, they are primarily made up of four key things um, so you've got the fillers um, that's kind of like you know to bulk it out so you in there you've got things like clay and chalk and talc and then you've got something called binders and also hardeners so that's things like cellulose and gums and obviously you know they they do what they say they bind the pigment together and they bind well they bind all the components in the recipe together um, and and they harden so depending on how much they put in is how hard a core you get <coughs> then you have the waxes so these can be anything from beeswax paraffin wax canuba wax you know any type of wax used to um in there as well and also then you've got your colorants which are the pigments which obviously you know sort of most of them usually like vegetable different vegetable extracts but can come from anywhere um, a lot of pencils nowadays are vegan, um, so they are completely yeah, plant sourced for the colourants. So those are the four things that go into creating your colour pencil. Harry, yeah, Harry, it will be ink based, but it's still got a binder in there. Ink tense is wax. It's got a wax binder in there, um, so it's got a water soluble wax binder, and it might have other bits in there as well, um, because it you, you can't just put ink and dry it and put it into a pencil because it'll just be dust so they need things to bind it together to harden it because um, otherwise if you go to sharpen a point and there's no nothing in there to harden it it will fall apart so all pencils have got a mix of pretty much everything like the polychromos and the albrecht dura are supposedly um the same all the same, the same in the core apart from the binder that holds it together so one's got a water soluble cellulose binder um, and the other has got more oil and wax in there binding it together and a different type of like a gum holding it together so I don't know the recipes but you know this is the basic overview of them so when they add oil the oils are simply added to improve um, the strength of the lead um, so the strength of the core and also the mouldability so this is why each pencil brand you know or each each type of pencil has its own recipe um secret you know very heavily guarded secret <laughs> and um that's right so what i've written down here ink tents yes yeah, water soluble wax base so i've written this down earlier now polychromos as far as we know has got higher higher oil content so when you think about what i've just said that oil is added for hardness polychromos is apart from my verithins i would say that my polychromos are up there with possibly my hardest pencil because when i want a super sharp point to hold um and in 
for details, I tend to go to my polychromos. Um, then you've got, let's go down the list, we've got polychromos, oil base. Albrechtura is supposed to be the same pigment in there. It's a water-soluble cellulose binder that they've got in there. I've put it as a wax because it has been described to me as being waxy. So when you think of the finish of a polychromos piece, a pure polychromos piece, you'll get, if you look at the surface under light, you'll see a very reflective surface, oily. That is the oil, so that's the high oil content in there, in that core, to harden it. Doesn't mean that there isn't wax in there and other binders. It's just the proportion. hope you're all getting what I'm saying. Prismacolor. Now, Prismacolor are known for being quite waxy. So if you think about Prismacolor, they've got less oil in there, which reflects in the fact that they're a softer pencil. And so there's a higher wax content. So that's when you see about people getting wax bloom and things. I'd say Prismacolors from all the ones out there that I know of tend to be the waxiest. So they're also the softest. They mix and blend lovely, but they do. Remember I said earlier about that cloggy claggy sort of you can get that if they're if you're working in quite a warm environment so next we've got the luminance now the luminance are supposedly <laughs> one chemist has said like say they're oil based and the other person has said they're wax based as far as i know most people say that luminance are the oil based product pablo's are their mostly wax based product i tend to agree with this from just how i work but saying that again, though, I find my Pablos do hold a nice firm point, not as hard as my polychromos. Um, my luminance, my luminance, I think they are a little bit softer than my um, Pablos. That's just me personally. Some people say the opposite way around. I tend to find, I'll, talk, I'll go on to talking just about the Luminance and Pablos for Robin um, as I go through this. Then we've got our Derwent Lightfast. My screen is flicking on and off here, so I hope I'm not losing you during this. Um, I'm wondering if it's my monitor that's going on my laptop. That might be what it is. There might be a connection, so when it's dipping in and out, it's not power cuts. So hopefully, I'll just keep talking, and as long as the camera's on, you can see me. <laughs> okay, so the light fast. The light fast, we all know, Derwin have said, it's their oil-based. So, um, so it's quite clearly on their website as well. It is their oil-based pencil. 100% um, light fast as well, same as their drawing range as well. So again only thing is with this again is I don't think it's as high an oil content either that or there's slightly more wax in there in that formula because I don't find my light fast holds the point as well as my polychromos they're not as hard that's me personally uh, I know other people have said the same you can create beautiful detail with the, the light fast but for me I much prefer them they're very similar to luminance I think as well for mixing and blending my polychromos especially on drafting film I tend to use my polychromos put that down and then I mix and blend that out with um, my softer pencils so in other words illuminance or the light fast I think the light fast work wonderfully for blending out and then I've got I've just added in the Derwent drawing which again is a water soluble wax based so it's got a water soluble wax in there and you can add water to the drawing pencils and we've also then got the ink tents which again are supposedly wax based according to the Derwent and they're water soluble um, and that is different because there is ink at the core of that rather than the other pigments vegetable extract pigments um, that are in normal colour pencils <clears throat> okay so I'm going to just look at I've waffled lots there so I'm just going to look at the questions that came through whilst I was talking before I do this demo and just see what you've asked, bear with me a second. Okay. Susan, you've got some Lux Archival. Apart from using polys, any other tips? Okay. Yeah, Lux Archival, um, super true to colour. It will completely freak you out. If you, obviously you've got the white. If you get a small piece of white pastel mat, Susan, just do a few test swatches just with a few different colours. Just like to grab a blue or green, some really obvious colours. Grab your primaries or red, yellow and blue. Just do same pressure, a few little swatches just on you know, your Lux Archival and on your white pastel mat. And you will see, I did it on that demo video. Um, the difference is unbelievable. 
whether it's the fact that the Lux Archival just shows the colours super true and the pastel mat shows them very, very muted or the pastel mat showing them slightly truer and the Lux Archival is just turning it volume up so much. I'm not sure, but I think it's the first one. I think we'll, you, you, you will struggle because you'll be like, whoa, and you will need to knock it back. I know when I was doing it, I put in purples and everything into the cat eye fur um, because I was so used to working on pastel mat and knowing that I could knock that back with some greys and that over the top. But on the Lux Archival, that purple was there. Once it was in, it was there and it was showing. Um, it does look like it creates dust, but that's because it, it grabs so much pigment it almost is doing five layers to every one of the pastel mat, um, possibly even more. So you do get a slight amount of um, dust come off on your polychromos on pastel mat. It's just you'd have to do five, five, six, seven, eight layers worth to get the same as is going down on the Lux Archival in one layer. So that's fine. But yeah, it, it is fab. Um, any combos of pencils brands that don't play well together that you have found... Oh, not really, Avril. I mean, if you're going to be using your prisms, I don't use a lot of prisms. I've only used them a couple of times, so I can't really say a huge amount about them. Um, but I would, with some that I would use more for my colour blocking and underlayers. So something like Prisma, I'd put that down, my, my claggier or my thicker layers, I'd put that down first. And then I find my polychromos or my pablos are harder. I should then be able to cut through any of that thick pigment to put detail in um lumens yeah most of them work well together and that's why you can cherry pick you know nice colors from all of them um i'm sure i mean i've even got a few favorites favorites in the prisma color range now that i do pull out and mix in and i've got a few pablos and i've got a few polychromos and now i've got a few light fast so you know i tend to mix and match all of them um that's why it's good to buy really open stock Can you use a mix of all the coloured pencils on your list on pastel mat? My screen has gone again, which doesn't help me. OK, I'm back up again. Um, yes. Yeah, Barry, absolutely. I mean, as you know, I've mainly used pastel mat over the years, so that is my preferred um, paper. So that's what I've tested it on mostly. OK, so I'm going to keep an eye on the questions. We're going to come over here now. Let me just get this up on the screen. So all I'm going to do, what I've done is I've grabbed a black pencil and I've grabbed one from each of um, the ones we've been talking about there. So the polychromos, um, bring it down, it gives me a nice hard point and the point on this will last a nice long time before it, run, it rubs away. And you can self sharpen, obviously you keep turning your pencil as you work and you can self sharpen as well. So all I'm going to do I'm hoping this is going to show. I did do a test, so I'm using a really light pressure. I'm just going three, four, five. So I've just rubbed that over five or six times. So you can kind of see it gives quite a soft, opaque, um, soft translucent. I find the polychrome is quite translucent, but that's really lovely to layer with, especially if you're putting in lots of layers. I'm talking to the camera. You're not even watching me on the camera. So I've turned myself off, haven't I? Oh, let me turn that off as well. Bear with me. I didn't realise that was showing up. Let me get rid of that. And let me get rid of that. Now you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> so what I've done there, it's literally just gone over here, back and forth, six times, and then done three flicks. So you can kind of see um, how the pencil goes down. This is on white pastel mat. So that's our polychromos. So Albrecht Dürer is next. I mean, Albrecht Dürer is the pencil that I started out with years ago. I need to sharpen that one. Um, it gives a slightly chalky finish if you're just using these dry, but I did use them dry. Um quite a lot and it just gives a, a very soft chalky finish rather than obviously the um, polychromos give a beautiful oil finish when it's you know, when you finished your piece. Avril asked there was a hoo-hoo a couple of years ago about quality issues with Prismas. Yeah they moved the manufacturing of Prismas I think down to Mexico I don't know whether the wood changed again so four five 
six. So I'm using the same pressure. And it gives pretty much a similar effect there as with um, the polychromos did as well. So next we're on to our Prismacolor. I find with the Prismacolor they're very oh, thin to hold. Okay, so here's a flaw. I'm hoping you can see this. Let me see. Right, can you see there's a line running right up there? And it's great that Avil just asked this question. I bought this set. When they first came, um, I left them in a warm place for a couple of days so that if they'd been dropped at all when they were in transit, that I, I'm going to carry on that I could, it would, you know, meld that wax back together because the main problem was when people were sharpening, they were falling apart and they would end up sharpening, you know, right down to here. Sort of like you'd lose all of this with just one sharpen all the way down. Now this is a major flaw. I've only used them twice. They've been sat in my, you know, in a drawer, nice temperature, no, not too hot, not too cold. When I go to open them, this crack runs all the way down top to bottom of the wood and I've noticed this in a lot of those pencils and they've not been damaged they've not been handled or anything so when you say about the quality for me they sharpen fine the core on some of them are slightly off center but this split in the wood is horrendous so to me they're quite a cheap pencil I know in America they're easy to get hold of but that to me is nah, not good I'm not sure, is, is it cedar? I can't even remember what wood it is that they use. So that's our Prismacolor. Right, Luminance next. Luminance is quite a fat, chunky pencil, and a lot of people complain that, you know, you can't fit it in the, your sharpener. I mean, I use the Jakar sharpener. Oh, you see, this is why I don't like Luminance. Four, five, six. That, on the paper, just felt like it was scratching scritch scratch and I hate the feel of it it's like it's almost I, I don't know what it is they just don't feel soft and nice to me people say oh they're lovely and soft and they mix and blend um I, I, I just don't like the feel of them so I've got a whole set here and I just don't like the feel and I know these come um as a set of just 72 um but they have got more new colors just coming out um so, so some of the ambassadors have said that there's new colours coming out there. So black that I use, I mean I tend to use my polychromos black. This is the um get it right, this is the Pablo. <laughs> so this is the Pablo. This is how I differentiate between the Pablo and your um watercolour pencil, your Albert Durex. I have picked up the wrong one before. One silver, which is the Faber Castell, and one is gold. Um, and another problem with luminance two three four five six another problem with luminance is um you can't see the numbers i know they've changed it now the new one's coming out you can you can see that i think they've changed it to white print on here now but this it looks great because i've got a zoom on the camera and I've got a real bright light on here so you can see but most of the time you cannot see what the number are, is or what the colour is and there's been a huge complaint about that I know I did start to rub paint into mine into the indentation white paint so that it would show up better anyway but I know that they have now improved on that right so my dough went light fast so this is my new favourite black as well if I want a nice thick black a nice rich black I am now turning four, five, six to this. It does hold a lovely point, and for some reason on the pastel map, it's giving a nice sharp line. But you can see there how well that light fast has gone down as opposed to any of these previous ones. Even the Prismas colour, which is usually the Clagger one, it hasn't gripped it hasn't gone down anywhere near and I'm using the same pressure for all of these so I'm just going to finish this off this is the drawing pencil one two three four five six so you can see there how thick that has gone down that pigment 
I'm not sure if this is cutting in and out or not. Just have to let me know in the chat if this is cutting in and out. You've all gone very quiet. Either you've all disappeared on me. But this, the drawing pencils are quite a struggle to get a nice thick, um, a nice thin point, sorry, a nice thin sharp point. Can someone say something in the chat just so I know you're all there, please? <laughs> um, okay, and so lastly, I'm just bringing in an ink tense. I don't use ink tense. Four, five, six. Only because I haven't got around to them. I've got a set here that someone gave me. Um, you get ink tense in pencil form and also in blocks. Um, they have got a wax soluble binder, but they have got slightly different binders between the blocks and the um, pencils themselves. So you can see clearly from there um, the difference between all of those and how they've gone down. Um, I'm going to add water to these in a minute, all of them, because... Good, you're not, no cutting out at your end, Philip. That's great. Um, hi, Frank. Um, we've got a few technical issues, Frank, but you've joined, so hopefully you've missed them all. I'm, I'm dipping in and out here as well. Anita, do you know what? I've got some of the drawing pencils. I've got a range of them, and I've not pulled them out. Until this tonight, I haven't really pulled them out. So now that I've put this down, this is giving a lovely one. Do you know what? I'm going to pull out another colour because I've got them here. Um, let me just pull out a mid colour. Now, I thought the drawing pencils had graphite in there as well. They were a mix of graphite and pigment. I haven't looked into them enough. Uh, but I'm thinking of actually just do, trying to do a project where I do all the blocking, the underblocking now using this. Now, this one has sharpened up to a lovely point here now. Let's see if I've got room up here. Yeah, I feel like they're going to lose the point quick, um, quickly, but for going down, that is going down. And I can see why you would use that on pastel mat or on a textured paper to speed things up. So after doing this tonight, I'm, I'm really going to be focusing on those drawing pencils, especially that black. So it's good to hear, Anita, that you use it as well for, you know, getting your good rich black in there as well. Great. I can imagine they are great on drafting film, actually. Um, I'm going to have to try that. So, we've heard that the light bus and drawing has some colour range and are interchangeable. Harry, all of the Derwent um, products are supposedly interchangeable. They're all designed to mix and match with. Um, if you go onto their website, Derwent's main website, they've got a Q&A section and you can go through the Q&A section and there's some great stuff in there, great explanations of things, great information. <coughs> um, and I'm sure that's where I've, I've seen it. Um, obviously, I'm still learning quite a lot about my Derwent products. Now, one thing that I want to do is just come in and add some water. Okay, so I'm just, <coughs> excuse me, just grabbing my water. So apparently, I, I saw someone mention somewhere about at the CPSA, um, you can add water to any pencils. I don't know if it's going to work as well. I did some little tests earlier off to one side. Let me just pull those across. So I did some tests earlier. Obviously, you won't know from this which ones were which. Now, someone has said, and, I, and someone mentioned earlier as well, that John Middick on Sharpened Artist this week, maybe this week or not even this week, another time, has said about um, this. I don't know if he's demoed it. Uh, the drawing pencil is Derwent, Anne. Um, so it's not a huge range of colours, but I think they were just relaunching them. I think maybe 24 colours. I'm not sure how many there are. So don't quote me on that. I can double check. So anyway, someone was saying about the CPSA, there was a demo of, that you can add water to any pencils. Um, I think maybe I need to do a few layers rather than just doing this on a single um, pencil. So, of course, we know already that our Albrecht Dura, so I'm going to add water here, our Albrecht Dura, it's a watercolour pencil. It's going to instantly add water to that and look at the beautiful vibrancy of the black that you get. So let's go down again to another one that we know is going to be So water soluble, so there you go. Now, as I've added that to the ink tense black, I can see that coming up quite a reddish tone. You might not be able to pick it up on the screen, but it's coming up here with quite a reddish tone there, whereas the Albrecht Jura came up 
black black. So now into that, I'm going to come into that drawing pencil. So that's the drawing pencil. Now that is coming up absolutely beautifully. So there you go. That beauty, that drawing pencil is really sort of um, ticking all boxes with me at the moment. It goes down lovely and thick on its own, but adding water is fab. So now let's come in and see if any of these others are going to do anything when I add water. So the polychromas, which is our high oil, ba oil based. Now I'm surprised at that, that's the polychromos has moved there. Let's clean off my brush, make sure it's going on nice and clean. Yeah, it's going on nice and clean. Okay, here's the Prismacolor. Luminance. Not as much there with the luminance. Okay, here's the Pablo. And this, they are all. Let's try the light first. So there is. There is movement, you can see it there. You can see movement in all of those pencils and that result has completely blown me away actually. So there's something obviously in those binders that's, n that's some of that pigment, some of those um, colorants that we've still got access to. Avril, I'm using white pastel matte because white pastel matte I know takes water beautifully. Um, I'll also blend some of these out as well. So there's that ink tent. So you can just see that it's quite a brownie. It bleeds quite a lot and that's because it is ink. So if you remember when I do my inky drawings, I use um, pastel matte for those as well. Um, let me just drag that lovely drawing pencil out. So I'm hoping by doing little things like this, if you guys haven't got these pencils, um, but it's something you wondered about, then just doing these little tests means it saves you buying something or it makes you buy something. Um, I'm interested in that, just dragging out that polychromos. I just don't believe that polychromos. I'm going to put the polychromos down again. I know I put it, I know I put it down, but here's my polychromos then. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I just don't believe really that that's happening but it is isn't it wow so <laughs> um that's quite astonishing so i think it'd be really cool to do some mixes of different colors and now add water to it yeah harry you said mentioned earlier harry, someone else was talking about adding water to light fast and has demonstrated it only on sanded paper Obviously, the pastel mat's not a true sanded paper. Let me just bring myself back up on the screen. But you can see the results there kind of speak for themselves, really. I'm, I'm quite gobsmacked at, you know, what, what we can see there. Um, especially the polychromos. So I'm wondering, so, I mean, if we mix... I can do it quickly whilst we're here. Well, there's no more questions coming in. Let me just grab. Um, right, I'm going to grab a red and a yellow polychromos. I'm just going to pull this down. Let's just do it up here. So let me just grab a red, three, and a yellow. Now we, these will kind of mix to give a slight orange. So I'm just going to put a few layers down. I just want to see what happens here when I add water to this. This might have just have saved my day. Where I was saying earlier about the fact that um, I'm not going to be able to, you know, pretty much touch. Excuse me. Um, solvent again. I'm just wondering... 
if this is going to be not completely obviously going to work exactly the same but whether this is going to be something that I can play with <laughs> using water because um, I, I never knew it's just a revelation um, and I'm quite blown away and now that you've said this Harry about using the sandy paper um, so I'm just ducking down here because yeah okay I'm intrigued now so if you don't all mind hanging on for a couple more minutes I've got um, some Lux Archival here I'm just going to do that red and yellow test just on here again um, just so we can see let's move this up out of the way because I, I, I just, I just, well, I can't believe it, to be honest. <laughs> okay, so let me get my red and my yellow. Okay, so this is obviously Lux Archival paper, um, which is true sanded paper. I just want to use a corner. I don't really want to do something right in the middle. So, Susan, you'll see here, see how, three, four, <laughs> that's just how much that pigment goes down. But look, you get dust coming off as well so let me just shake that off it grabs the pigment so much quicker and truer than if you were using um, pastel mat okay so I've got a good few layers down on there so where's my brush I put my brush down I think I'd finished okay so in with the brush to be honest, it's quite a similar effect. Oh, I picked up a hair there, sorry. This is the other thing with Lux Archival. You will find where it's really rough, it's like sandpaper, it picks up all types of fibres really easily. But to be honest, yeah, <laughs> that does work really well. Wow. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. Thank you for wanting to have Q&A sessions and I'm so glad I decided to do a little demo. <laughs> right, let's bring myself back up on the screen. Okay, where are we? So, this is the test you think work better over pan pastels, Robin. Um, Pablo's, Robin. If, if that's part of what was influencing your decision on whether to go for the luminance or the... Um, Pablo's, because um, mainly you want to work over pan pastels with them. I would say the Pablo's. That's ones I've used the most, and it's the ones that I've enjoyed the most. I can use my polychromos over my pan pastels. I prefer my Pablo's. Um, I haven't really tried the light fast over the top. They feel like they might be a little bit too thick. Um, let's bring down these results again. Just look at them. I haven't really tried my luminance, to be fair. That's because I think I get such a good result with the Pablos. Um, and I just find the luminance scratch a little bit. I don't mind doing a little test with, you know, some pan pastel and trying my luminance over it. Um, and giving you feedback. But like I say, I'd go for the Pablos. I love the colours. I love the way they go on. I don't seem to use them up very quick. A beautiful range of greys and the browns in there as well perfect for animals so i I'd, I'd, I'd say the pablos to be honest and you, you get more pencils in a set you can get good deals on them you can get really good deals under 100 pound for the full set of 120 it's just spotting when they're out I'll, i can have a look to see where i got mine from last time and pass that on to you in case they've got any on offer i know i did post it in the group at the time I think there was a set going for a hundred, no, for eighty-five pounds for the full set of Pablo's at one point, and I did share the link. Um, quick questions. Biggest factor, brilliant. Okay, Robin. Um, do I ever use sandy paper like colour fix? Having a hard time with it and thinking I might go over with water soluble. And Karen, which colour fix are you using? Are you using colour fix smooth, or just normal colour fix paper? Um, if you want to use colour pencils, I would recommend using Colour Fix Smooth. Colour Fix Smooth is designed for pan pastel work, but it works beautifully for colour pencil work. And you don't need um, 
you don't need um, as many layers. So if you compare it to pastel matte, you don't need anywhere near as many layers as pastel matte, but it allows you to work dark to light. I've done both polar bears are on color fix smooth. Um, and I'm, they've got a beautiful range of colours. Elephant is a beautiful colour in their range. And you can add water. So you can use water, you know, watercolour on there. Um, watercolour pencils, solvent. Obviously we know now we don't really need to use solvent as much. Um, this is drying now. I'm, I'm going to show you. This is drying out slightly lighter. So where we move that pigment, just before we go, where we move some of that pigment out, can you see it's drying a lot lighter but it, it has moved it and we've lost obviously where that initial concentration of pigment was um i just wanted to show you that before <laughs> we say goodbye hi sue good to see you anyway but yeah yeah karen if you i, I wouldn't the sanded stuff it's more for pastel work it's most of their papers is designed for pastel work in so I know that they're standard, um, I think they do like a, t they do two mainly for pastel. One is just Art Spectrum Colour Fix, but you need the spect Art Spectrum Colour Fix Smooth. And Jackson's is the only European supplier as far as I know. Um, I mean, you can get it from other places, I think like Blix, I'm not sure. They only really have like one retailer or one distributor in each area. Um, but yeah. It, it's, it's great paper, I love it. I, I want to do more on it, I just don't get enough time to draw as much as I want to. Um, so yeah, we are up to time. I know we've gone over a little bit, but we did have some air technical difficulties at the beginning, as per usual. <laughs> My voice has just lasted out. Um, I know it won't last much more. It has flown by, I know. <laughs> um, obviously, we'll talk more of those of you that are joining me on Sunday as well. I'm going to try and do um, more Q&As when I can, because I think they're pretty invaluable. But they're good for me as well, because I get to chat to you guys. Now, and next, we're doing another guest artist, more guest artist ones coming up. I was chatting with Karen Hull this morning, um, last night. This morning, her time, this morning, oh, it's just, we're really struggling with the timing of it. Now, it was nine hours difference, so it might be a case of, I will have to try and do a really late one here, so possibly 11 a.m. at night, um, 11 p.m., so 11 o'clock at night here, which isn't great for people in the UK, but it means, Karen, it's um, seven in the morning, which is an early start, but she's up uh, super early anyway. Whereas the opposite one would be 10 and o'clock in the morning here and 7 o'clock for Karen in the evening, which isn't as good for Karen with her home life as well. So we're just trying to work that out. So we will be getting Karen in in the next two or three weeks, hopefully. Um, and then I do have other names. I've got Judith Selchuk coming up as well, but I have got a lot of other names of artists I'm inviting. It's just as long as they've got a camera at their end. Um, the one with Alan last week was great. Um, I enjoyed it and everyone else hopefully enjoyed it. And we learn lots as well. And that's the main thing. It's a community spirit thing and we learn. So I'm hoping that you've learned tonight because I've learned from doing this tonight. Um, I get all these pencils in the, all these drawers and I just don't use a lot of them because I'm constantly using what I know and trying slightly new things but not wanting to scare everybody else too much. Harry, I might have a look. I've used Ink Intense before and then didn't like it because I felt it dried quite flat. But I actually quite like the effect that it's given on this paper, the way it's bled out. I did try it once alongside one of the inky drawings to see the effect it were good. I know I did a little video saying Ink Intense versus inks um, and I liked it and you could use it to create something quite painterly um, and I love the bleed like I say on the pastel map um, so maybe I can do something and it would be a quite a quick little tutorial as well uh, using the ink ink tents as a real colourful playful underpainting and then using other pencils like my polychromas or something over the top for more details we shall see excuse me
So big thank you. 11 p.m. is okay in these lockdowns. I know Harry is terrible. Trouble is with uh, with Karen. Her husband's still working, so he's getting up and he's gone at 6:30 every morning, and he he gets home at 6:30 in the evening. So they want to sit and have dinner, which I completely understand. Um, I didn't realise obviously he was still having to go out to work at the moment. So I think we're going to be on lockdown for a few more weeks yet. So I will get that booked in as soon as possible. I might just have to go to bed for a few hours and then get up at 11 and hope that I've got a voice as well. But I'll just let Karen talk anyway. Giselle, get well soon. Oh, I hope I get well soon. Um, yeah, big thank you for Rob. Um, he helped me out at the beginning there. He's lent me his, 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 his iPad so I can answer all the questions. Oh, I just, like I say, technical gremlins with my screen flicking on and off, the microphone not working, and my chat not working. So there's always something to test me. Um, so big thank you, everyone. Everyone stay safe. Um, just continue to, you know, look after yourself. Hopefully I can get back up and, you know, sort of get more drawing done. I've managed to get, you know, another... Little, I've got two tutorials up on Patreon for you over the weekend, both the background tutorials, one in Pampa style and one in um, colour pencil. Obviously you can see behind me, they're on the drawing board here. Um, I'm going to hopefully carry on on the bottom one, which is the pan pastel version. So I'm going to use pan pastels now for the flower and then use pastel pencils because a lot of you have asked me for pastel pencil tutorials. Um, I haven't done one, so... As the dust isn't affecting me, like other irritants at the moment, I'm probably going to do that one, carry on with that one next. Um, do the flower and bee and then go back up to the pure pencil one or watercolour pens, whatever we're going to use up there. So, um, Okay, so let me just have a look. I think I've actually got me not talking. What's going on? Okay, right, so I'm going to say goodbye for now and hopefully speak to you all again soon. Take care, everybody, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button um, on your way out, okay? Thank you and good night.